Hello dear students, welcome back to the Pharma e-learning channel. Today I am going to discuss about the one of the video that is the factors affecting the crystallization. Now let's go into the details of this uh, factors which are affecting the entire crystallization process. Before that, if you need any tutoring or the coaching help for any other subject or any other topic related to pharmaceutics and the pharmaceutical technology, please feel free to contact on the pharma e-learning at the gmail.com or you can reach out to me on this WhatsApp number too. Now, in the introduction video of the crystallization, I highlighted that the crystallization is a process into which the solids are going to convert into the crystalline form and the crystalline form has a number of advantages too. Now, this slide highlights what are the different factors which are affecting the entire process of crystallization. So, we can classify the factors into the different nine types of the factors. Other some of the factors are uh, interrelated with uh, one another too. So now the, the factors are like a type of solvent, degree of supersaturation, crystallization, temperature, agitation, speed, rate of cooling, impurities and additives, suspended particles, shedding and the flow regime in as well as the surface of the crystallization vessel too. Now out of this, the most important factors which are going to affect the crystallization process is the one that is called the degree of the supersaturation. As I explained in my introduction video, the difference between the unsaturated, saturated and the supersaturated solution. So we can say the supersaturation is must for the crystallization. If the degree of supersaturation is low, then the most faster growth of the crystal will take place. So as you know that in the another video of my uh, crystallization theory, I highlighted that the crystallization basically uh, takes place into the three parts. The first one that is called the primary nucleation, secondary nucleation and the followed by the crystal growth. So in this case, if the degree of supersaturation is low, then what is going to be happen? The faster growth of the crystal is going to be take place than the nucleation, and which will lead to the larger crystal size distribution. And looking at the degree of supersaturation is high, then the the nucleation will be faster than the crystal growth. So the slow glow of the crystals will take place, and that's why it will lead to the smaller crystal size distribution. So depending upon the whatever the crystal size distribution we want, we'll have to keep the degree of saturation accordingly. The second important factor that is called the crystallization temperature or the cooling rate. Uh, this is very important if we are going to uh, obtain the crystals by the temperature change only. See the crystallization temperature or the cooling rate both have the similar effect. What it means if the crystallization temperature is going to be high or the cooling rate is going to be high then it will lead to the formation of the larger crystals and it will give the broad crystal size distribution and if the cooling rate is going to be lower then it will produce a smaller crystals and it will give us a narrow crystal size distribution so depending on whatever the crystal size distribution we want we will have to keep either the higher or the lower rate the, another, the next another important factor that's called the agitation rate as you know that the agitation rate or the agitation is a agitation rate is important phenomena because the agitation is what we another word is called the simple stirring that will try to keep the maintain the uniformity of the concentration throughout the solution. So if we are going to stir at a very high rate or vegetate at a very high rate, then it will lead to the smaller crystal side uh, generation because it stops the crystal growth process. If vegetation is low, then the crystal growth is more pronounced compared to the nucleation, and that's why we are going to get the larger crystal size. The next important factor we will have to consider that is called the type of the solvent. Generally, the type of the solvent is most useful uh, when we are going to obtain the crystals by the change in the solvent. Uh, basically, two types of solvents are used. The first to prepare the saturated solution and then convert into the supersaturated. We require a solvent into which the substance is going to be freely soluble. So, that is called the, the first type of solvent which is into which the substance is going to be the freely soluble to form the saturated and supersaturated solution. And we are going for the solvent change. So the another second type of the solution that should be the in solution, that should be the such a type that into which the precipitate or the material must be or the crystallized material must be insoluble. So that's why uh, the mass transfer will take place from the solubilized portion to the unsolubilized one, and the crystals will come out. But here the most important thing again keep in mind this both the solvents that is a freely soluble and the insoluble what we are using with respect to that solid form which we are want to form the crystal they must be miscible with each other. Another important point is that if there are we are using the higher concentration or the higher amount of the solvent then uh, what would be happen the, if we are using too much solvent then the solution is going to be too much dilute for the crystal formation too. 
another factor that's called the seeding the seeding means a seed crystal is either of the same material or the another material uh, from which a large crystal of the typically same material is to be grown so seeding means we are adding the one of the crystal of the same material or the another material so that will try to initiate the primary nucleation followed by secondary nucleation and the crystal growth will be there. so the seeding is i can say that it is the initiator of the crystallization process will be there so depending upon what is the material we added either the same or the different type it will be either homogeneous or the heterogeneous primary nucleation will be there but again the seeding at a higher supersaturation level may result into the excessive secondary nucleation and that is going to affect the crystal growth so these are the some of the most important factor which are going to affect the crystallization process will be there so you know, if you like my video please give it like and share to your friends and please subscribe to my uh, channel that is the pharma e-learning channel for the more upcoming videos related to pharmacy thank you